In a previous video, we saw how to set up Kafka on a Windows machine, and we also created a program that will write a message to a Kafka topic. In this video, we're going to take a look at the other end of that process, how to create a program that will read from a Kafka topic. And the example that I have here is a fairly typical scenario. We have one microservice that is gathering data from a user via a form or some other upload means, but there's part of that process that is long running and requires a lot of compute resource. So what we're going to do is offload that to a specialty program that only does that long running process. And we will have these two shake hands through a topic. So a topic is how we go from upload photo to the resize and watermark photo. So in this video, I'm just going to start this resize and watermark application. In a future video, we will actually add the logic to do the resizing and the watermarking. In the spirit of a true microservice, I'm going to have my new microservice work simultaneously with my other microservice, the one we've been building through this series. So uh, I'll make a brand new project. I'm just going to choose File New Project. And then we'll use the built-in Spring Initializer. Let's give the group name com.myplantdiary.postprocessor. Essentially anything that happens after upload. In Artifact, we'll call it Photo Processor, or Photos, whatever you want to call it. Everything else here looks good. This will be a fairly straightforward, in other words, small application. So we don't need a whole lot of dependencies, but one that we do need is Kafka. So I went to Messaging, and I chose Kafka. And we're all set. You can see it starts us off with a basic Spring Boot application. One consideration. This application, at least at the moment, is not going to have a user interface, so we don't really need a web UI for this. However, even with that, it still needs Tomcat to run. And if we have two Tomcat instances running simultaneously, and we have them configured to the same port, the second one's going to fail to start because it says, hey, no fear, this port is already in use. So we need to give this a new port. We can do that with application.properties, but we can also do it with our local IntelliJ IDEA run configuration. So let's simply choose Edit Configurations. And we see Post Processor Application, Environment. This gives us an option to specify an environment variable. So we can simply say dash D, no space, server.port equals, and then we can give it another port number. 8080 is default, so we'll go with 8081 here. If there are any other options you want to pass up, uh, this is the place to do it. We choose OK. Next, let's make a new class. We'll call it Photo Processor. Let's create a method to process our photos. At the moment, we just want to confirm that we're reading from the uh, Kafka topic. So I'm going to put a simple system out print line in. We're not actually going to do the photo processing in this video. As I mentioned, we'll do it in a future video because our focus here is solely on Kafka. So I will put in a very simple line to do a debug. I normally really don't like system out print lines because I find that people tend to use them when they don't understand the debugger. And also system out print lines tend to go to a console, which no one's going to pay attention to. But for a simple debug operation like this to confirm that the method is at least getting called, this will work for us. Now, next question, how is the method going to get called? Well, we have to add a Kafka listener annotation. And you see, since I added that Kafka to our dependencies, this already appears. I don't have to go back and update our pom.xml. So we need to give it a topic. Let's say topic, and we'll say topics equals... And then you might recall from our previous video, we made a topic called photo in. And then we also need a group ID. I can run back to the producer application and confirm that the group ID is going to be my plant diary. As a matter of fact, you notice that this is in an application.properties, which is in our other program, the one that's producing to this uh, topic. We're going to need a similar application.properties in this new consumer program that we're writing as well. So just make a note of that. We'll be back there in a moment. Just a couple more annotations that we need. First of all, let's go ahead and add the at component annotation to photo processor so that Spring Boot knows about it. Next, let's take a look at that application.properties I mentioned a little bit ago. You see here, there's nothing in it. Let's go back to our original project and grab a few things that we're going to need. Since this project is just a Kafka project, our new project, we don't need all those dependencies, only the Kafka configuration dependencies. 
and we save. I right clicked and started the application in debug mode and I just want to show you immediately what happened. Notice that it is receiving this path and if we take a look at our console from our previous video we know that we have two items that are already sitting on this topic. So it's just going to print it out but what I anticipate is that this first item we're looking at is that very first item that's on the topic we see Redbud 2 and sure enough Redbud 2. If I press F9, I bet we're going to get the second item that's on our topic. Press F9, let's look at the path, and we see Start Slideshow for this one. Once again, confirm with our window. Sure enough, Start Slideshow. So you see a very simple program that simply is reading these items off of the topic. Uh, easy to write. Now, what if we add an item to the topic while this is running? Because remember, part of the idea here was to have two Spring Boot projects running simultaneously on the same computer. So first of all, let's confirm that this one did indeed start in its own port. If we scroll up on the console here, we should... Easier way is to simply search on it. And if you take a look, you can see the options that were passed in to start this program, including port 8081. So let's watch what happens now when I upload a new image. This time we'll choose just plain old pawpaw and submit. Now you notice that IntelliJ lights up orange, but this page responds. Well, remember I set a breakpoint in that long-running process over here. So this Spring Boot service is still able to serve other customers, and that's the whole idea. We take the heavy lifting, we move it over here. This Spring Boot microservice is still responsive. So let's take a look at our path that we've received. And you notice that it is pawpaw.jpg. But the neat thing is, you also notice that this is essentially running on demand. It runs only when there is work for it to do, otherwise it goes to sleep. So this is a very efficient process because it only works when it needs to. So this has been a look at how to set up an incredibly simple consumer to a Kafka topic. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.